Hey everyone, this is uh, the We'd Like to Talk podcast. Uh, this is our brand new podcast. We're going to be talking about uh, a little bit about the industry and uh, honestly a lot of cool topics that we think y'all will like. So um, myself, my name is Kevin Suratowski. Um, I'm a partner in a couple of dispensaries here in Michigan. Um, I will talk about my background in a little bit, um, but I also wanted to introduce here my special guest star, and that's Victoria, who you'll probably be seeing a lot of on these podcasts. I, uh, she's a wealth of knowledge, so we're going to have some fun today. Um, actually, Victoria, why don't you take the floor and uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself, and I'll uh, cover my background for a minute. Yeah, my name is Victoria Nichols. I'm a, kind of a director of retail ops for um, a dispensary here in Michigan, um, really local to me in my hometown, so it's a, it's a big passion of mine. But I've been in the cannabis space for uh, three or four years in the legal market, but I've been a caregiver prior to that and uh, a smoker of <laughs> myself, you know, since I was like 15. So um, maybe a little too early for some, but that's uh, where my kind of journey with About cannabis began. Yeah, right in mm. high school, middle school. <laughs> Ooh, sorry, Ma. Ah, she knew. Okay. My mom already knew. <laughs> your, your mom knew? She knows now? She, uh, I'm not going to lie, I forgot if it was like four years ago, I want to say, but she called me one day and she found a bunch of papers, flour, and a half bottle of 151 in the rafters of my basement. And she was like, oh, is this yours? I was like, I have no idea whose that is. Yeah, I don't smoke It's wild. Pot. I have no idea where that came from. Yeah, yeah. no, I might have just actually outed myself on the 15 things <laughs> of my parents. Uh, so we'll see how that goes over in the next family dinner. But yeah, no, I was caught with my um, gravity bong that I hit. I had a two liter. I cut it in half, right? And I jerry-rigged jerry the entire top with a <clears throat> like a like like a little nut ratchet or something like that on the top. And then hit it in my jug, my sports jug for soccer. You know, it was just big enough to have my half my two liter in there. And I, I hit it in my closet and she went to find the two liter to, well, the jug to clean it for soccer one day. And she opened it. <laughs> so it's just like, what is this? You know, I had to explain myself because at first she thought it might have been another drug that wasn't cannabis. So luckily for her, it was, cannabis. it was just cannabis. The best one it could have been. Yeah. She was yeah. excited to know it was cannabis. Not at all. So, and what did you, uh, before I get into myself too, uh, tell them a little bit more about yourself. What'd you do before? What you do now? Um, I'm, I'm making you do that cause you're super important. Yeah. Our yeah. Business, so. Um, what I did prior to ever getting into legal space with cannabis, um, I, grew weed in my closet of college. Um, but prior to that, I worked in restaurants and hospitality. So managed a lot of, uh, restaurants, bars, even country clubs. Um, so, you know, had to play the part in the country club of very, you know, prestigious professional girl, no, nothing about weed. What are you talking about? Um, but yeah, it's the funniest part about that is, you know, I'm dealing with a lot of really prestigious people, a lot of people with bi really great businesses behind them and really good names. And I, uh, started working in cannabis and working in dispensaries near or the country clubs I used to work in. And, you know, unbeknownst to me, I would go to work and I would see so many of my members coming in to buy weed. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, you, you guy, you know, I, no, I Any never Any teachers knew. from the past? Oh, yeah. That's, I've seen teachers. I had to, I've, I had to I've ask. seen teachers, kids I babysat have come in and bought weed for me. It's getting really <laughs> wild, the people that you, you come in contact yeah. with. But it's, it's also funny to be like in the space, in the dispensary, and you have one customer buying weed and someone else walks in and they, they look at each other and they go, oh shit, you know, we know each other. Yeah. At one time it was like a kid and his boss, right? Oh. So they both walked in and they both didn't know that they smoked weed and they looked at each other and mutually were like, you're not going to tell anybody about this, right? Yeah. You know, I won't tell anyone. If you don't tell anyone, they're like nodded oh, they're, and they're, walked out of the dispensary. They're friends now. That worked for them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, no, it just came from a lot of uh, customer service space. I've, I've loved interacting with customers for as long as I can remember, um, you know, whether it was with food or, or liquor or beer, wine, and now it's cannabis. It's my favorite thing in the world, which is cannabis. So, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a dog lover. I'm a cannabis advocate. I'm a big family girl, so that's kind of a little bit about me. Okay, okay. Well, thank you for that. That's awesome. So I, I have a, I have a interesting background in the space overall. Uh, I started a CBD company uh, a couple years ago. A couple years ago. Geez, I'm aging that. Uh, about seven years ago, uh, during kind of a crazy time in the CBD industry where a lot was going on and changing, and uh, based on things that did happen in the industry at that time, I decided not to pursue that any further. And uh, had a buddy of mine that was working in the cannabis space, had a pretty successful uh, company, and decided to join forces with them and help grow it. So I uh, spent a lot of my, well, first off, spent a lot of my early career in automation, uh, manufacturing in general. So when I was 
getting into manufacturing cannabis, I was like, oh, that is way cooler than nuts and bolts and simple car parts. So I uh, kind of jumped on in. Um, was a really cool experience. I um, actually still work with the company. Uh, they have since grown, um, got a couple different divisions, different types of products. So spent a lot of my time in the lab and the actual manufacturing of cannabis. Then I uh, was lucky enough to have a few of my uh, buddies and partners that currently um, have a really good thing started and got to join a team for Planted over in Michigan on the retail side, um, which is why we're here today. And uh, you're going to hear from those guys probably next episode, a little bit about our story and stuff. But yeah, I've been in the retail space, uh, played in the gray market, we'll call it, back back in the day, <laughs> grew wow, back in the day, grew a little bit currently, uh, never a, a ton, but grew so I understood the plant science because it is amazing and I wanted to really have that hands-on approach. So pretty well versed in the industry and spread out a bit and uh, super excited to share some of that talk to you guys about cool topics, introduce you to people I've met, and uh, just have some interesting conversation about the cannabis space. Yeah, it's wild what cannabis turns into once you go down the rabbit hole. I mean, for me growing up, it was just to, to laugh, to have fun mm -hmm. with my friends, to smoke, mm -hmm. just smoke some weed. It was a social thing. And then, you know, the, the older I got, the more I started to realize, like, what cannabis was aiding in mm -hmm. for me, you know, like what ailment, oh, anxiety, or oh, what, um, you know, I was always eating, you know, yeah. so I never had a problem. I was always eating yeah. something yeah. when I was right. smoking, you know, so it was one of those things that yeah. cannabis, I just, I went down the rabbit hole and it's ne you never come out, you know, you mm -hmm. just, you sit there and you just want to learn more and more and more. And every day that you're in cannabis, you're learning something new. So yeah. I just tell people, I'm like, I know a lot. I know a lot about cannabis. I've spent a lot of my personal time researching, reading books, watching documentaries, but every day there's something new that's coming out. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're, you know, we're in the cannabis space. We're barred a little bit from fair research without it being federally legal but yeah. um you know individuals have decided to take it on themselves and, and grow plants in their mm -hmm. house for reasons that aren't smoking it it's learning more about the plant it's figuring out what what benefits can we receive from this plant you know mm -hmm. so that's something that i've been i've loved i i never imagined when i look back and, and where i know i was in college deciding what i wanted to do with my life right i couldn't decide what degree i wanted to get settled on supply chain management business, but I never knew that I could look down the road and see my future and go, I'm going to be working in cannabis professionally, Same. right? Like I'm going to make yeah. an actual paycheck off of this plant yeah. that is like, is it to me is taboo, right? Like yeah. at the time, you know, my That's mom didn't know my family. Like, yeah. I got grounded for it. I got, yeah. I got in trouble <laughs> with the cops for it. And now I'm, you know, I'm like, Hey mom, yeah. I bought your Christmas present with weed money. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like I love it. I love the, it. the way I think about it is just, it's crazy. So it's exciting to be able to, you know, be a part of letting people know more about cannabis and, and bringing people to light with cannabis and go, Hey, like there's so much more to cannabis than, you know, and even people who know about cannabis, if they think they're done learning, like they, they've just scratched the surface, you know, Absolutely. there's so much that we can learn and so much that we can share with you guys. So we're super excited to be able to do that with you. Yeah. And you know what, that's, that's, that brings up the, our next point too, right? What are we going to be talking about in these episodes? So um, you know, she, uh, Victoria said something cool. She said, you know, there's always something new going on. There's always something changing. And, uh, I, I think we're going to cover a lot of that. We're going to cover what's new, what's going on, not only in Michigan, but you know, in other States and, uh, other places in the industry. Cause as we do start to go towards, uh, you know, federal legalization one day, you're, you're starting to see a lot of States start to do the same stuff. So we're going to talk to you guys about that. Uh, we're going to be bringing in special guests. We want you to know how we make the products that you consume, right? Everybody's like, Oh, this gummy, right? Well, How's the gummy made, right? Uh, where does it come from? What's in there? How does that little seed or that plant turn into that gummy or that chocolate or concentrate? Uh, we're we're, we're going to cover a lot of that. We're going to have uh, everywhere from cultivators to some of our vendors, manufacturers, other people in the retail space, patients, caregivers, industry experts. Uh, we're going to bring a lot of really good content. Um, we're going to utilize our network of trusted people that we've 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 worked with for many years. And we're gonna we're gonna just bring some really good stuff to you. So, um, w with that said, today uh, we see we were told we have to tell you guys what we're gonna tell you in these podcasts. And I was trying to figure out how to make it go for so long. So we said, you know what? Let's just pop right into a little industry overview. Uh, we get a ton of questions every day. We, we thought of some cool topics that'll educate you guys on the space, let you know how we work and do business. Um, so with that said, I'm just going to jump right into the first topic and cover one thing that's going to talk about the progression here in the state, but also in a lot of other states. And that's, uh, you know, how did people used to buy weed before dispensaries that was, you know, legal, if you must, right? Uh, it was 
caregiver. So um, spending a few minutes, and actually maybe Victoria kick us off uh, on that side of things. Uh, I was just trying to communicate how caregiver started and then how it progressed into commercial and how they both still exist in the space. Yeah, so um, you know, caregiver started as a as a big kind of patient a, a program through the state of Michigan. Um, it allowed uh, if you were considered a caregiver, you could apply for a caregiver license, right? Mm-hmm. And um, if you got approved for this license, you were you were to get patients, right? So as as a caregiver, that caregiver card or the caregiver license doesn't actually entitle you to purchase cannabis like for yourself or anything, mm-hmm. but it allowed you the ability to get patients. So. Uh, We all know that cannabis has tons of medicinal uh, abilities and effects on people and can aid in a lot of different ailments. Um, So so people realized this and they said there's got to be a way for access to cannabis. Um, So you've got caregivers who then would get patients. Patients would sign up through the state of Michigan, um, register as a patient, and and claim this person as their caregiver. That person now has the ability to grow 12 plants on their behalf. Okay, So they can grow these 12 plants, they can whatever they yield or harvest out of it, and and kind of the, the relation between caregiver and patient was it was whatever they decided, right? So if it was, you're going to give me free weed or you're going to give me weed at an extremely low cost. And, and it kind of started with, with just actual flour, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. you're going to grow 12 plants for me as a patient. I smoke an ounce a week or it, whatever it was that you were smoking. And it was kind of on your caregiver to go, hey, I'm growing 12 plants, but realistically, one person isn't really going to smoke everything that that 12 plants can yield mm-hmm. you. So the benefit for the caregiver is I get to keep the overage, right? I get mm-hmm. to keep what you don't smoke and I get to keep that and it's legal. I get to, mm-hmm. I get to keep it. Um, and so they could have honestly a, a ton of patients. So you know, yeah. that, that, it was, and I, I want to interrupt you. I actually looked yeah. it up before cause I knew this would come up. Okay. It was 12 plants per patient five up patients. to five patients, yeah. which got you to 60 and then 12 for personal use, which was 72, or yep. that's at least the recent. I don't yeah. know how it was so back in the day. But, I believe it was, yeah. it was fairly similar, okay. but yeah, you could yeah. grow up to like 72 plants, but anyone mm-hmm. who grows weed would know that 72 plants is a, a full-time <laughs> job on, yeah. on its own, right? Yeah. So it's, you know, a lot of times it's like, hey, you have the ability to legally, if, if the state came in and, and wanted to see your operation, if you had more than 72 plants, you were violating the law, you know, yeah. and a lot of times they would just take your extra plants. They might mm-hmm. shut you down. They might take your caregiver card, but you know, it was, it was different. It was kind of on a, a on a different basis on every situation. So it was really cool. Cause that, that's the caregiver um, market. And so in 2008, uh, Michigan approved the sale of medical marijuana in dispensaries. Um, so you could actually, it was 2008. Wow. Yeah. Was, Four, two, wow. Yeah. Right. It's a lot of years ago. So yeah, Michigan so, props to Michigan for doing it that early. Yeah. What's honestly. Up, so it, what's yeah. up? Michigan was one of yeah. the first few States to come online. Honestly, outside yeah. of obviously California in the nineties and things like that, but mm-hmm. you're talking, they can now open storefronts and sell yeah. weed out of storefronts. Like, holy yeah. crap. That is so freaking cool. So we get used to it every day, but we take a minute back and we're like, Whoa, this is it's, really yeah, you cool. You get used to working yeah, in a space, yeah. but then like some days I go home and I'm like, I'm selling weed for a living, <laughs> like to people. Like this is really cool. Um, and the coolest part about it is, as is opposed to selling sharks weed. or something. Yeah, selling no, okay. sharks people, out of my okay. basement. Yeah. Um, yeah, before I, yeah, I, yeah, I sold weed um, to my friends, but you know, it was it was different. So it's cool. You got the caregiver space that then's turning into like a legal space, right? That, that they can tax this. It's there's, but for the medical side, it's only a six percent sales tax, which you get when you buy your groceries, you get yeah. when you buy your clothes, you get you get a six percent sales tax in Michigan on on everything. So it, it was cool. It was an easy access for patients to receive their medical products. And, and this allowed, you know, for other products to come into the market. Like, yeah, we're, we're, we're growing weed and we're giving our patients weed, but is there other ways to ingest cannabis? Mm-hmm. You know, there's edibles. I remember I was one of the youngest, uh, patients to receive my med card simply because I, when I was 18, actually, when I received it. Um, but at the time it wasn't, if you weren't 21, they were hard pressed to give you your med, your I license because that, yeah. if you were to get in a situation where you were underage drinking and you had your med card, they would actually pull that doctor into court, right? Mm-hmm. They would pull that doctor that issued me my medical cannabis card into court and could hold their own medical license, you know, at mm-hmm. jeopardy because, yeah. because of what I at an underage 21 you know, choose to do, you know? So, um, I actually had to write an affidavit when I went to get mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I went and I met with three different doctors, got denied by the first two. I herniated discs in my back. I destroyed my back in, you know, working out in, in high school. And that was the whole reason why I wanted a med card. Well, mm-hmm. I wanted a med card primarily because I wanted to go in and buy edibles that I couldn't freaking get on the street. So that, that's the biggest thing. But I remember my first edible I bought was the cellophane wrapped 
chocolate dipped Oreo, yeah. right? And it's like 75 milligrams, eat at caution, you know? Like <laughs> it didn't give me any dosing. Like it didn't say like, cut this in half. Caution, t- 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 <laughs> Yeah, right? So the, the lady behind the counter, I'm like, oh, what's that? You know, she's like, it's a chocolate dipped Oreo. I'm like, okay, like, hell yeah. Like, I want one of those. Like, you give me one. After so, I get that this story approved, uh, me and my wife's first date literally was on an edible yeah. No, an, another another podcast another for podcast that one. for yeah she's gotta, gotta get, get her approved yeah, nothing yeah. too embarrassing but it's kind of funny I, it's, yeah. it's just wild right so I, I took this edible home and no one told me like at the time bud tenders were for newer that's mm-hmm. what we call bud tenders people mm-hmm. who, who give you your cannabis and we call mm-hmm. them bud tenders it's yeah. fun play off bartenders but we um you know I got this edible I went home I smashed it I smashed yeah. the entire like I eat one Oreo in a sitting like that mm-hmm. makes sense right so I was blazed for like three days I don't know I don't remember no, wait, one Oreo in a sitting doesn't make sense I will eat a hundred right in so a so you, yeah. you chocolate cover one and you're mm-hmm. like only eat a bite of it like you know and, and here's the thing you bite it it's a mess it mm-hmm. goes every might as well just eat the whole thing so I ate all 75 milligrams I was, I was literally slept for like three days in college mm-hmm. I don't remember what happened, right? So I slept. I didn't come out of my room for three days. It was great. I actually slept the best I've ever slept in my life. But mm-hmm. it was so wild that that was the experience that I, I got to have, right? I got yeah. to go in and I got to see these, like, products that were literally being made in people's basements, right? Yeah. Because as a caregiver, you had the right to sell overages to dispensaries And now. you were ahead of the game, too, as a caregiver. Yeah. You're dealing with marijuana, so... You're doing edibles before people were like, oh, you can put these in edibles. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. So I, and it was, you know, not only that, like just being in the black market, having, smoking weed, it, you find people who smoke weed and people who were like, oh, I baked this into a brownie, <laughs> right? Like if at the time you weren't like making even weed, but people were just chopping their weed up. I'm and having like, PTSD. Yeah. <laughs> that story was a brownie. Oh, sorry. So it's, <laughs> it's funny because people were just chopping their weed up and yeah. like quite literally throwing them in the brownie. Like mm-hmm. they weren't trying to make a butter. They weren't trying to do anything fancy. Like they were like, we'll eat these nuts, yeah. right? But just put them in a, ba- a brownie batter and like we can eat these nugs mm. and so that was like some of my first edibles were yeah. just like brownies with nugs chunks in them you know and with it, the butter with yeah well the butter yeah. came after yeah. but like people oh, wouldn't even yeah. make butter they would just yeah. chop their weed up and what's cr- what cracks me up about this is that i had uh, an older couple come into the shop the other yeah. day and they yeah. she said i'm buying three nugs of weed like she just wanted three nugs not a weight yeah. not a specific weight just three nugs like three good Did she size say nugs. nugs though because she she's said pretty nugs. hip that's, she said nugs okay sweet. like i want three I nugs yeah that, and then I said, what are you going to do with it? You're going to smoke it? Because she was like specific about these nugs. She mm-hmm. said, no, I'm just chopping it up and putting it in my brownies. I said, do you make weed butter out of it? Yeah. She goes, no, I just chop them up and put them in my brownies. <laughs> and I started dying. I go, well, that's, I mean, she goes, I, have you ever tried to make weed butter? She says, yeah. that sounds like too many steps. She goes, yeah. I get high if I eat it. So it's fine. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people don't realize that you can decarb flour yeah. at, you know, anywhere 200 degrees mm-hmm. in the oven is, is kind of the max you want yeah. to heat it at. But you can, once it's decarbed, you're going to get high. You just mm-hmm. eat the nug. It's not usually flavorful or great, but that's a way to do Definitely it. Definitely not great um, flavorful. So it's interesting how the caregiver market transformed, right? So they're able to sell overages into dispensaries. So people like me with a med card or anyone with a med card, and actually med cards can be issued to someone under the age of 18 for a medical illness. They just have to have a guardian, like a parent or guardian mm-hmm. that hold that med card for them, that shop for them, that yes. go into the shop. You know, okay. my youngest patient was like eight months old. Yeah. I can remember. Um, Which cancer. is cool that they allow, mm-hmm. uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later too, but that they, that they're talking about this and allowing at least it's a progressive state in regards to like we're, we're, we are understanding that there's medical benefits to people yeah. that are oh. different ages and that we need to allow them that access when needed just absolutely monitor. absolutely yeah. and that's what you know allowing it to be your, your parent or guardian that, that goes in and buys this for you and oh. you can't actually have anyone under the age of 21 unless they're a med card holder 18 mm-hmm. um into the shop so they would have to do this for their kid and um it would they would be the one dosing mm-hmm. their, their kid or whoever for whatever medical um illness that they might have but it's one of those things i i got to see transform i got to like go into dispensaries. It was cool. Like there's dispensaries. I went to Eastern and they're just like all around yeah. campus. Right. And so I could like leave class, go pick up a doobie, yeah. go home, you know, and it was legal. Like no one was going to tell me I can't pick up a doobie. Mm-hmm. I no longer had to like wait for my plug to hit me up and say like, Hey, I've got <laughs> weed plug, now. You can, yeah, that's, yeah. you know, back in the day and it, it would hit me up. Hey, you have weed now. Are you mm-hmm. good? I'm like, I already bought weed from so-and-so's yeah. friend because you didn't have weed and I don't need weed anymore. So it was just a streamlined way. I could just go to this place and I could buy my weed, you know? And it was, it's cool to see. It's cool to see the market transform from that. So caregivers were able to sell overages, which was a big, a big, uh, you know, plus side to being mm-hmm. a caregiver, right? You you got to sell pounds in the market. Like mm-hmm. you could sell pounds in the black market to to your friends or whatever, but that capped you at like how much you could have. So yeah. if you're growing seventy two plants in your basement, if you're running at full max with your patients, like 
you have so much extra weed that you need to oh, do yeah. something with. You know, and it's like you could you could bathe in it, you could burn it. Like you just have so you have yeah. so much weed you don't know what to do with. So um, caregiver then in about it was the October of twenty nineteen, mm-hmm. the state of Michigan decided to ban caregiver. Mm-hmm. So no caregiver products in the market. So this uh, pulled the rug from underneath a lot of yeah. caregivers, right? You know, so I, I have differing opinions on this, of course, and as uh, does everybody, but being a caregiver, actually my mom became a caregiver in the space um, mm-hmm. a few years after I started working in cannabis and realizing the benefits that she could get from it, but um, pulled the rug a little bit behind, uh, from underneath caregivers mm-hmm. and they could no longer sell overages. So of course it has like a massive impact on the legal market. A so lot of families. Yeah. yeah. You're talking, yeah. Um, you know, people no longer having money to bring in income to their mm-hmm. families and also like kind of short supplying dispensaries that were mm-hmm. used to buying mm-hmm. caregiver products. So you're, you're, you're looking now at a market with a little bit more inflated pricing because yeah. products harder to get. Well, and the only product you can get is from a licensed facility. So, and, and you know what too, I will say, didn't they, I, I will at least give them credit. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, that most States do this. They usually give the people the ability to kind of flow through some of that caregiver product towards the end, right? Yeah, yeah. So they, yeah, if so you they had, try to not hurt the business yeah, during the transition. They, to yeah. not hurt the business, yeah. right? But it was, you know, if you had caregiver product that was pulled in mm-hmm. um, prior to October 2019, October 31st of 2019, you were able to sell that product. You were able yeah. to continue to sell that product. It wasn't like, hey, you have to pull it from your shelf. But it was from this point forward, you are not yeah. to bring in or purchase caregiver product. Mm -hmm. So that kind of leads right into like, what is caregiver versus legal market, right? Mm -hmm. So you have your caregiver market, which some people call the black market. Like, you know, it's not entirely the black market in Mm -hmm. my opinion, but you've got a caregiver market of, of people who, do small batch grow, right? Mm -hmm. So 72 plants is enough to supply you, your five patients, and and even some overages into a dispensary at the time, but it's not enough to sustain a brand or a company or a business in the the license market, right? Especially one with demand. Yeah, with with the big demand that we have in Michigan. So it's one of those things where it was a double-edged sword, banning caregiver, right? Mm -hmm. So again, lots of differing opinions on that, but it, 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 it un- short supplied the market. So then it required anyone who wanted to sell cannabis legally in the state of Michigan to go into the licensed market. Well, that requires applications, license fees, appropriate zoning. Like mm-hmm. there's so many things that go into play and you know and this, you, you sat firsthand yeah. as yeah. owner of a dispensary dealing with all this. So there's like mm-hmm. so many f- uh, 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 costs, uh, uh, like upfront costs, mm-hmm. barrier to entry in the market is just, is just literal cash and funding mm-hmm. to get into the market because it's not federally legal. So, banks that are federally backed will not give you loans Mm -hmm. or business loans to open a cannabis business. Right. So that is a whole nother topic that we can get into a hundred percent, but it's just a a basis of, you know, people sometimes think prices in the market are inflated or prices in the market are way more than they used to buy from their friend on the street or from their buddy who was a caregiver. And it's like, yeah, because they're paying all these license fees they are paying labor. Now they're paying mm-hmm. building fees. It's not just their home, their basement that has an extra few hundred dollars on their electrical I'm going bill. To, yeah. 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 Every, and, and it's, it's not just a one-time license fee, right? Mm-hmm. You're paying this year after year after year. Mm-hmm. So yes, I will say that I've seen some crazy like quality cannabis come out of caregiver, mm-hmm. right? Like I, I could make some pretty decent weed in my closet. Oh, so yeah. someone who outfitted and puts thousands of thousands of dollars into their basement mm-hmm. has grown. I've seen some amazing weed Absolutely. come out of caregivers, right? And you know this, we have a lot of friends mm-hmm. who are caregivers. We, we've smoked our friends weed. It's, mm-hmm. it's wild the quality that you can get, but scaling that right mm-hmm. is hard. So scaling that to a larger scale and saying, we're going to take this quality and we're going to like scale it out to a thousand plants from 72 and we're going to grow the same quality. Scaling. Like it is, a, it is yes. a undertaking that people don't realize, right? They're mm-hmm. like, I did 72 plants in my basement for years. Like I can do this. And even I was, I was that way. I grew a few plants in my closet and then I moved into a house, rented a house. And I said, Oh my God, I have a whole basement. Well, I'm going to fill it with weed. Like I'm going to fill yeah. it with as much weed as I possibly can. I have patience. I'm going to fill it with weed. And so I filled my basement, 72 plants. Holy crap. I tried to, to tend to 72 plants and have a full-time job. And I just, I killed all of those plants. I really did. It was sad, you know, but it's something that people don't realize the scalability of cannabis. It's there, but you have to have the like basis of it. Right? You have mm-hmm. to have the right partners. You have to have the right p- facility, the right timing in the market. Genetics, like, everything. Genetics, every, uh, there's so many things that have to go right. So in the market, as it currently sits, caregivers cannot sell overages into the market. We cannot purchase from caregivers as much as I would love to, you know, as a, as someone who runs a retail space, like I, 
I think there's an amazing quality cannabis, Absolutely. but there's, there's some other things that you start to think about. It's like the state wants to be able to track its seed to sale. So that's mm-hmm. their whole point of, you know, Hey, we're going to test this. We're going to track this. We're going to put all of these parameters around it. Well, if someone's a caregiver, how do we know where they're getting their clones? How do mm-hmm. we know where they're getting their cuts? Do we know if their genetics are really what they say they are? You know, things like that is kind of like the state's reasoning for yeah. that and obviously money, you know, like there's a, a you, you touched on a good aspect. point with scaling though, too. We've always talked about this in uh, like the lab and processing world, you know, there's bench top and then there is at scale. And a lot of people argue, you know, w- what is the answer there? Which one is right? Honestly, in my opinion, there's a market for both because when you go at scale, you're going to get your costs down, right? You're going to start getting efficient and you're going to start being able to offer, you know, a good price and a consistent product. But also when you're really dialed in with that craft too, you can really uniquely tailor that experience to each person too. So something that I'm seeing, you know, right now on the commercial side, I don't know about you, but, uh, and and actually to cover too. So we, we, we said 72 plans for caregivers, right? Uh, for commercial, uh, we have class A, B and C in the state, right? So there's, there's some different States that do different things, but in Michigan, it's class A is a hundred plants, class B is 500 and class C is 2000. So when you start to talk about, like we were joking about, she was saying 72 plants is a lot to take care of. Well, now imagine 2000 plants, right? So these larger commercial growers, you know, um, they're able to get that consistency, right? And get that good price. Um, and they're also able to get the good quality too, but it's just a total different, it's a total different market. So, and I, and I will mention too, when we talk about some of these things, these are all, you know, we're just trying to bring you guys good information. We don't have any opinions one way or the other. We respect all parts of the industry as you can see, but yeah, it's just different. I I truly think there's a market for everything and it'll, it'll even itself out. So many working parts in the market and just so many people that are out here doing the right thing, you know, trying to do the right thing with Mm -hmm. cannabis. And and the way I look at it, Michigan's actually the perfect state to to use this as an example, but it's craft beer versus like your Budweiser, Mm -hmm. your Coors Light, your, it's, it's your Oberon versus your Coors Light, right? So too hard. It's, it's all of your, it's your Hogsmeade. It's your, it's everything craft beer, right? So you have craft beer. You have the people that are going to come into the market and say, I'm going to find a niche, right? I'm going to do something a little bit differently Mm -hmm. that everyone else is doing, whether it's, I'm going to grow in strains that are specific to my grow or my brand or I'm going to grow a specific way, you know, like there's, or if we're in a specific experience, which we will do an episode on experience based cannabis. Yeah, exactly. And so it's, it's really cool too. It's however you take your brand and Mm -hmm. what you're going to, your values and how you're going to identify your brand. Right. So you're going to do something where I'm going to scale this massive. I'm going to become a Budweiser. Like there's, there's nothing wrong with Budweiser. Everyone loves Budweiser or, or, or Coors Light or Bud Light, but People who will enjoy craft beer are a little bit more on on yeah. the connoisseur when you could say connoisseur on mm-hmm. on our end, right? Mm-hmm. You you have a little bit more of a connoisseur, like, and you've got people who enjoy wine, but you've got like your very nice high end wines, mm-hmm. and then you've got your you know boxed wine, yeah, yeah, yeah. your Franzia. Like yeah. I, I I smacked the bag of some Franzia in college, say, you know? I just so smack the bag. Yeah, so it's uh, oh, it's just one of those things. It's a personal preference, right? Like, are you smoking weed because? you're using it as an experience, like Mm -hmm. you said, or is it because I'm using it medicinally and I don't have the money to like spend on this craft cannabis Mm -hmm. that you're calling it. Right. And some people don't understand that. And it's, I'm not taking away from the quality of larger grows and I'm not taking away from the quality of, of the caregiver or the the craft Mm -hmm. cannabis either. But what's really cool is, you know, Bannon caregiver hurt a lot of caregivers, right. Took Mm -hmm. a lot of people out of their income and out of their, but there's also a lot of caregivers who had so much uh, footing in mm-hmm. even the black market, right? In the carrier market, yeah. a lot of footing, a lot of followers, a lot of people. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and, and they grew big and they had people supporters, right? So mm-hmm. they actually had the, the bandwidth yeah. to go legal, mm-hmm. right? So they had the supporters that were like, I've been smoking your stuff for years. Mm-hmm. I- I'll put my money behind you. Right. Like, and that's Instant what it is. Yeah. And that's what market, it is in cannabis. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, finding people who support you and your dream and your vision enough to, mm-hmm. to give you their life savings. Like you poured your life savings, everyone I you know that has opened a dispensary, it's open to grow. It's because the only way you can get funding is through private investments, private, right, yeah. of your own most of the time. Mm-hmm. So it's people taking everything that they have ever worked for and pouring it into this, hoping that this is going to pan out how they want it to. So for me, those caregivers that are able to make it to the market are 
are fully supported already, you know? So they make it to the market and it's amazing. I love the conversations I have yeah. with these people. Like as much as it was a we ton. We should have of, it. We got to get a good special oh, guest for I that. Know yeah. the, I know exactly who I'm thinking perfect, of in my perfect. head too. But yeah. there's, Talk um, about the transition. there's just so many amazing people in the market to meet. Like that has been my number one. Yes. Like all the free weed and all of the like weed I get to try and all the products and these things are amazing. Like yeah. that's obviously a freaking bonus, but mm. I, the people I have met in this oh. industry, you being one, you know, there's just like <laughs> the people you meet. Yeah, tell some of those stories. Yeah. Yeah. Stories, the people yeah. you meet uh, are a big reason why I do what I do. Right. And my patients and my customers, yeah. but, um, it, it's, it's wild when you start to compare where we started mm -hmm. to where we're at now. So, I mean, that kind of leads into a little bit of where we started was medical mm -hmm. caregiver, right? Mm -hmm. And where we are now in the state of Michigan, we actually, yay, have recreational Finally. sales. What, what date was that again? I'm, I'm drawing a blank. It was, a, it was a November of what, two, two years ago? 20. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 My brain is just totally fried. I right know. Now. Me too. Well, you, you said something good about the, you said something good about the Medverse rec though too. You, you referenced patients, right? And I think that's another thing that like people don't, um, maybe get, cause we ask, we get a lot of questions asked about that. What is medical versus recreational, right? So we started as a medical state and this is varies for, you know, diff well, I guess really everybody usually started as a medical state, except for right now, some of your new states coming on could launch medical and rec because rec became a thing, obviously. Uh, but, uh, Michigan started off as a medical state, uh, transitioned into a recreational state. So when we say patients, we usually refer to medical. And then when we say, you know, customers, customers we refer to recreational, right? So, um, I've gotten the question before, like, well, what's the difference, right? All the time. Yeah. And I want to hear your opinion on this too, but yeah. basically with med versus rec in my, you know, uh, in my, my opinion is there's some brands or some companies where there really isn't much of a difference, but there's also some brands which you'll be meeting and you'll be seeing and uh, getting introduced to that there is a difference, right? So for example, uh, when people ask me, I say, well, the first thing I ask is, do you like edibles? And then they're like, well, yes or no, right? Yes. Well, the number one thing is you can get 200 milligram edible packs. So in the state of Michigan, you under recreational, uh, which is adult use 21 plus. Um, and as we said earlier, medical is usually 18, but there are certain exceptions or yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. So b basically, um, you can get 200 milligram packs of edibles versus 100 on, um, on adult use recreational. But the other thing is some brands will differentiate a little bit. So they know that medical patients are using these for certain ailments, right? So they'll maybe try to grow some strains that have CBD in them or other minor or major cannabinoids yep. uh, versus, and again, not in all cases, but uh, maybe recreational where it's just like, look, this is this is recreational, right? We want, we want to get high. So yeah. we're going to try to grow max potency, max, max THC. So there, there really is a market for everything. What else am I missing? So I mean, the, the yeah. biggest one is the taxes. Tax, 10 so, I mean, yes, I like mm -hmm. higher dose edibles, mm -hmm. but I freaking hate taxes. So, you know, I get taxed on everything. Um, and now even recreational sales, there's, so you have that 6% sales tax mm -hmm. that sits across the board on anything in the state of Michigan. And then for, um, recreational, we use the term recreational adult use interchangeably, um, for kind of the customer recreational is mm -hmm. what you guys know. Um, so we'll, we'll use that, but recreational, you get a 10% excise tax in addition to that 6% sales tax. So you're getting a 16% tax on your cannabis, but you know, that sounds horrible, but we're actually one of the lowest in the nation. Um, yeah. so if you go out to California, like you're looking in the twenties for mm -hmm. your total tax on your cannabis. So yes, it sucks, but it could be worse, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, it's one of those, the, the, the trade-offs that you take, right? Like I'm going to be able to, to get cannabis that I know is tested is okay for me to consume. There's someone that's going to explain this to me. Hopefully, you know, mm -hmm. behind the counter, we've got someone that's educated enough to explain this product to me. Yeah. Um, and it's an experience, right? So you get to go in, you get to buy, you don't get, you get to sit in your car and drive home and, and not like have the anxiety of like, I'm going to get pulled over and get arrested. Right. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't know this, but it should be like, uh, five foot from your reach in your vehicle. Mm -hmm. So you come in, we staple your bag, the state of Michigan considers that a child proof seal. Yes. A staple. I know, but, um, all the packaging inside is required to be child proof as well. Mm -hmm. So we staple that we staple your receipt, you put it in your car. I'm always like, Hey, put it in your trunk. Hey, put it in your back seat. Just like, don't have it within reach. You know, and people laugh, but I've had someone get pulled over outside of our shop and a cop like pulled his measuring tape out, right. And like measured from her reach. It was actually quite wild. Mm -hmm. I was the, the, the craziest thing I've ever seen in action, you know? Yeah. So it was, it was actually a, a really good learning point yeah. to show my staff too, you know, cause there's a lot of people that come in and they want to just grab yes. their, their product to shove it in their bag or their pocket and walk out. And unfortunately like Johnny losses, that's not a thing. So and that's something you guys do there. It seems like, well, we, we do there, but it seems like, uh, you, you, you try to educate the customer and make sure that they know how to handle it. Right. In right. All these and that's, and that's a big yeah. portion of, you know, 
we like to, to guide you through the experience of cannabis, but it's also like educating you on the laws of cannabis, which is mm-hmm. super, super important. So when you're, you're looking med versus rec, you're talking the same, um, if you have a medical card, you can buy two and a half ounces a day, mm-hmm. right? And on, on a 10 ounce rolling 30 mace a uh, day, yeah. that, that sounded really all choppy, but <laughs> two and a half ounces a day, 10 ounces on a rolling 30, mm-hmm. okay? So every 30 days, you can buy a total of 10 ounces mm-hmm. of weed. So that resets every 30 days. It's not necessarily people say monthly. It's not. It's on a rolling 30. It's yeah. based on the day that your card was issued to mm-hmm. you. Um, so the the tricky part with recreational is the law says two and a half ounces per transaction, right? Mm-hmm. Because medical sales are tracked through the state system and are attached to your med card. They're tracked. So my system will not allow me to sell you more than two and a half ounces a week a day. Mm-hmm. However, recreationally, you can buy two and a half ounces per transaction. So if you, if you read between the lines a little bit, it's saying, you know, they have no way to try. It's like buying liquor. It's like going yeah. to the store and buying liquor and then going to the next liquor store and buying liquor and, and going to the next one and buying liquor. Mm-hmm. Um, people, do that. They, they'll go into a dispensary and buy two and a half ounces. They'll leave. They'll go to a different dispensary and buy two and a half ounces. There's, cause there's no, it's not attached to the state tracking system in the sense that it's not attached to your license. It's not. A, and that's something I think is a big misconception that people think that their information is being taken and it's mm-hmm. being stored. And if the state comes in, yeah, someone comes that in the that they get, you know, what they think is it's a receipt with their name, their address, their phone number, and what they purchased. Like if the state came in and said, I want an audit of all of your recreational sales since you opened, I would give them a, a six month audit of all the products sold within the last six yeah. months, right? It's not, and it might be on a transactional basis, but your name isn't attached to yeah. it. So it's, with hey, that, in this well, transaction, they bought, right? right. Yeah, Medical, yeah, yeah. it's all attached, yes, because mm-hmm. your, your your med card is attached to the state and yeah. I have to abide by those yeah. laws, um, which we, we, we stay compliant on all fronts. We, we try our best to do that. It's easy in this market sometimes to want to not be compliant mm-hmm. in a lot of places and businesses that's just yeah. not, it's just not the way to do it. Yeah. Um, to stay in business, to continue to provide medication and, and uh, product to your customers is mm-hmm. to be completely compliant. Oh, yeah. So, um, and the compliance that, is there for a reason. I know yeah. a lot of people hate it, but it's good. It makes sure that they're getting, there's checks and balances. Clean, yeah, absolutely. Everything needs that. So, you know, when you're talking med versus rec, it's a big tax thing. So what I tell people all the time, if you have, People, there are people that are purchasing purchasing recreationally that are using it medicinally, mm-hmm. right? And and they're scared of that med card. They're scared of it being attached to their name. They're scared of it being an assistant. You can actually cancel your med card. You can you can call you can send a thing into the state and say like I no longer want this. Um, you can choose at any point in time. It's a HIPAA law though. So for someone to know that you have it, they have to have HIPAA. You know, you have to be yeah. signing off on these rights for them to see it. Um, but I tell people, I'm like, if you're coming in and you're buying weed once a month, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, a eighth of weed lasts you a month, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it might not be in your best interest to, to fork out the money for a card or yeah. to have that on your, your record or whatever. Exactly. But if you're coming, if I'm seeing, you know, Joe Schmo every day buying an eighth of weed, I'm like, dude, you could save yeah. so much money in taxes every if time. you're at, you know, and they go, well, I'm using it for my anxiety or mm-hmm. I'm using it for my depression or whatever it is. Like, yeah, that's a valid reason to mm-hmm. have a med card. You know, there's a lot of reasons in the state of Michigan to have a med card. Yeah. And you mm-hmm. know what I'll, you know what I'll say about the tax dollars too, that you mentioned, I actually had that as like a note that I thought was cool. Um, I'm not an expert in these other industries, but I, I have to imagine, right, where do tax dollars go in all the various industries? I'm, I'm, you know, it's public. I'm sure we all know. I don't know. But in cannabis, what I can tell you is I, I see them go to good use. I mean, Schools. you know, even I, I was going to say, like, I, I remember being in a town in uh, Colorado. Honestly, I'm drawing a blank, but I forgot where it was. But it was in Colorado. And I remember it was, I mean, just beautiful. The sidewalks were nice. The schools were good. I was walking by. I'm like, oh my gosh, this looks like 30 years in the future compared to some places I've seen. And uh, I was getting into a conversation with one of the bartenders and I asked him, I'm like, yo, dude, I was like, your city, it's so nice. Uh, you know, tell me about it. It was a small town. That's why I can't remember. And he, he, he mentioned it was, you know, it was legalizing marijuana. A lot of the tax dollars came um, from those pr- producers, from those retail places, and they put it to good use. They, they built school, or not built, they had schools, right? But they, they, renovated, <laughs> they renovated schools, them. they put yeah. money into them, they, you know, they fixed up the roads, they built infrastructure, they did a lot of cool things. And he actually told me he wasn't originally even a big fan of cannabis. And he said after what he saw it did to the local area, he, he, he became a fan. So when we say tax, I know everybody hates it. But you know, at the end of the day, if it's going to good use in your there's, community, there's everybody benefit. benefits. There's benefits yeah. to it. And like that, you know, I can move that in on, on a personal level with Planet. And, and oh, Kevin and I did not coordinate our outfits today. But, you mm-hmm. know, it just happened to be that way. But, um, you know, 
we as planted our first storefront we took a very dilapidated building mm-hmm. in the heart of a downtown of a really small town my, my town um and we took this building and we completely revamped it mm-hmm. from head to toe inside out made this building gorgeous and one thing about the building it was originally you gotta tell them what it was originally. oh it was originally a pharmacy literally well yeah a drugstore a dr- well it was funny because uh, the old funny. photos of it the sign outside yeah. says drugs sold here yeah right? you know? literally so <laughs> I, I have i have that photo and it, it will be hung in my lobby here soon but the wildest part about that is that the township was very torn mm-hmm. okay do we allow cannabis do we not allow cannabis you know the people who weren't for cannabis is like we're gonna have people hanging around on the streets there'll be graffiti mm-hmm. there'll just be weed smoke everywhere you know just potheads like yeah. laying on the, the ground and you know i don't know what they imagined but they, yeah. they had like this wild idea of what mm-hmm. it was gonna look like which you know i get it I right it's you, new yeah, it's absolutely. a new concept to a lot of people it's un, you're unsure how like how is this gonna play out what kind of people is this gonna attract right so we revamped the town and in, in our own little way, right? By like fixing this building up. Mm-hmm. And I've had people come in. We got a fruit basket when we first opened from a couple who voted no originally, okay? And they said we didn't want, it was banned pot shops, right? So they voted no, and this note said, you know, hey, we're not cannabis people. We don't care about cannabis. We're not, we don't really support it, to be completely honest. You know, the note was really cool, but it's a, we don't support cannabis, but yeah. we see what you're doing for our town. Like mm-hmm. we see what you're doing. We support you. That's we don't, cool. we we're you know, we're realizing the benefits that this can have outside of just cannabis. And, you know, our little town looks so much better now because yeah. of you guys. And that for me, especially being my like hometown, like it, yeah. it meant a lot, you Means know, it's like, lot, yeah. it's like, Hey, I, I can fully accept that cannabis isn't for everybody. Mm-hmm. Like drinking isn't for everybody, whatever isn't, it's not for everybody. And I get that, but it can benefit everybody and mm-hmm. in a different way that people don't realize. So, you know, having that, someone go full circle and say like we're against this and then we open and then they go wow to to even just give us a gift it was it was really cool and we get people all the time we get christmas cards we get christmas cards from a lady who comes in she goes i don't shop here but i just want to give you guys a business card you know and i are a christmas card and i was like this is amazing you know it's it's really cool how cannabis in a million different ways can bring people together so like revamping small towns and doing those things where where your recreational tax dollars will then go back into Mm -hmm. it is pretty wild so we got off on a little tangent on that med versus rec no, thing. But, you, but wait, you brought up a good point, though, because when you were talking about their concerns, right, or some of the people's concerns, I think the biggest key that, um, and we're going to show you a little bit about this and talk about this in some of our episodes, is there are conversations going on about this, right? So this isn't just like, oh, we want to open up the weed shop down the road and make some money, bro. Like, it isn't. Like, you know, these, these, these municipalities, the AHJs, we call them authorities having jurisdictions, Um, uh, regulators, politicians, like people are talking about how do we make this right? Like coming to us and saying, hey, look, um, the neighbors are worried about odor, right? Um, Could you tell us how you're going to mitigate that odor? Well, yes, we will, right? Or look, you know, we're worried about a school in the area. You know, how how does this relate? What are some statistics you can share with us on, on, you know, a crime in the area or whatever it may be? We have have distances we have to be from certain types of businesses and buildings. Um, You know, I I joke, I think one time uh, we were told, right, we, we, we weren't allowed to have candy canes for Christmas, non-medicated, by yeah, the way, in the front lobby, in the front lobby yeah, which, which is, fine. I get it, we right? Get it. Because it's... we, so, so we're following regulations yeah. and we're, we're having these conversations. I'll say not we, the industry is having these conversations. So if you do have some taboo behind it, if you're nervous about it, like you can reach out, you can ask us or people in your area. We're always open to talk. That's part of our job. We want to educate people on cannabis. Yeah. If it's not yeah. for you, that's okay. But it might be for others that you care about. So, And that's um, the biggest thing yeah. around cannabis is the reason I got into cannabis, the reason I'm so passionate about it is I want to change the perception, mm-hmm. right? I want to change that stigma. I don't want everyone to smoke weed, right? Mm-hmm. Like not everyone's cool when they smoke weed. It's fine. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. I get it. It's not for everybody. But like like I said, there's benefits to be had mm-hmm. from a lot of people. So my whole idea is to change the stigma. And, you know, and there's people that are pushy with it, that smoke it, smoke it, smoke it, smoke it. Just do it. You'll love it. You'll love it. And then they, they do, and they have the worst experience ever. And they're like, yeah, this confirms I hate this, you know? And it's like there's just ways – to, uh, to accept that this isn't for everybody, you yeah. know? And, and my thing is like, oh, you don't like to feel high? Like, I get that. Sometimes I don't like to feel drunk. I, I, yeah. I, I understand that's why I smoke weed more than I drink liquor. Um, so it, it's one of those things of finding that middle ground for someone like, oh, well, CBD is a 
non-psychoactive thing, which we'll, we'll go yeah. into, but, um, there's so many benefits to be had from this plant, whether Different it, cannabinoids, yeah. whether it comes from the plant itself and the use of the plant or the business that sells that plant. Mm -hmm. Um, there's just so much, and you know, there's a lot of different licenses out there's like social equity licenses. There's licenses that are like specifically meant to help like underprivileged cities and towns and people. And it, it's just, it's really cool what the state's trying to do. Like, obviously no one's perfect. They're mm -hmm. not going to get it right They're We're pioneering this as a state, right? Like yeah. every state we're, we're all pioneering. What's the best way to do this? How do we, how do we make this better for everybody involved? And how do we, how do we make money? How, how does it's this gonna sustain change itself? Lot. It's going to continue mm -hmm. to change and, and, and revolve. So that's something too, that's hard, I think for consumers to understand because they're used to markets that are really established. So when laws change or rules change, or we have to do something a little different or packaging requirements change, or this changes, you know, customers are reluctant. They we're creatures of habit. And naturally. it's always big news yeah, in any other yeah. industry. It would be nothing, but it's it, always it's for us, it's big, big news. news. It, it, yeah. it's, it's scary. It's new. It's different, but you know, it's, it's wild where we are. Mm -hmm. You can go as a 21 year old, instead of going to the bar and getting a shot or whatever, I used to, I used to think about all the things I could do when I turned 21. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I can do this and I could do this. And it's now it's like, I can, I can buy weed. Like yeah, it's right. really cool. And, and I get that it's not for everybody and they don't want their friends or family doing it, whatever it is. But like, if they're going to do it, wouldn't you rather than like do it and purchase it from like a safe space, mm -hmm. you know, like a space where they're learning about it, a space where it's tested, where it's, it, it makes like the state is approving these things. Like it, it that should give someone a little bit of peace of oh, mind, absolutely. you know, at, at, at the least, I know it's not for everybody. And there's still a big push to get people to support this, mm -hmm. but and it's not going to be by shoving it down their throat. Yeah. So, you know, med and rec, that's a whole thing. Just a little bit of basis. You know, you as a business, as a grower, a cultivator, you get, or a dispensary, you get two licenses. You have two licenses that you can get, a medical license and a recreational license. Um, and under these licenses, it allows you to sell medical products. And for less. cultivation yeah. and basically processing too. Yeah, which yeah. Which they're kind of coming default. They're kind of having most of them go both now. Yeah. So it's one of those yeah. things where before it was, you had to have a med license first before they would issue you a mm -hmm. recreational license as a dispensary or grow or process. Which cultivate, some whatever. states still kind of follow. Yeah. Which is, which is totally yeah. fine because it's saying, hey, don't leave the medical uh, mm -hmm. like market behind. You know, this is where we started. This is where our patients began. This is where our caregivers began. Don't don't leave them in the dust. I thought, you know what, actually, that just brings, I thought the New York thing was um, interesting what they did. Um, I don't have an opinion on it, really. Uh, it's not my market, but they did it where it was, if you had an existing hemp license, you kind of had like first dibs at yeah, it because you I already had a business up and running. You were going. You understood is, the dynamic. Yeah, exactly. But then they started opening it up too, right? So it's always a challenge yeah. in every state, city, municipality, whatever, to get to to, to be fair, yeah. um, which actually, I don't know. I mean, that's really kind of how we do business. That, that's, a, that's a good swag, segue. Everybody always asks us, oh, do you guys grow that in the back? Yeah. Do you guys grow the weed in the back? Where do you buy it do from? Do you hot or, box the Or room? how many times have you been asked, uh, oh, my boy, he grows the best weed. Can I get it in the store? And you got to yeah. explain, well, no, we're not allowed to do it like that. How, how do we do business? Let's, yeah, let's so, tell them about that. Um, you know, kind of yeah. Especially seg testing. Yeah, Touch on seg testing, Segueing too. Yeah. from the like, you know, medical and recreational mm -hmm. thing is the products that are grown under these licenses must be sold under these licenses, right? Mm -hmm. So medical product it has to be sold under a medical license, recreational. So I get customers that come into the store and they're staring, they're recreational, but they're staring at the medical case mm -hmm. and they're like, I want that. And I'm like, you can't have it. Yeah. You know, do you have a med license? Yeah. And then they're like, but I'm, I'm looking at it. And how come you can't just give it to me? Yeah. You know, I get this question all the time. Do you have and like it, a, some allure of lights around? Yeah. That like it's like, you need to yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. all like, usually there's a spotlight on me. Mm -hmm. I have to like explain the whole market mm -hmm. to somebody in like a five minute crash course, which I'd love to do. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. to do. I love explaining cannabis to anybody. But it's going, you know, I know it's there, but you can't have it. And then it's this why. And, and, and so I start to explain and it's the simplest answer is, you know, it's grown under a med license has to be sold under a med license. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, if you don't have a med card, you can't access these products. Mm -hmm. It just is kind of what it is. So with that being said, you know, people all the time, like you said, they're always asking, can my buddy sell their weed mm -hmm. here? Can I give you, I make these awesome brownies. Can I sell them here? You know, I can't even have you bring in your stuff to my yeah. shop. Like I can't have you walk in the door with your weed. Like you have to turn around. I can't even count on two hands anymore. How many times someone has brought me a bag of weed <laughs> through the front door and, and, and like set it yeah. on the front desk and was like, can I sell this here? And I'm like, you need to leave immediately. Yeah. Like I, that looks great. <laughs> it smells great, but you like actually yeah. need to leave. And I'm like, I'm not trying to be rude, you know, yeah. but like, this is really illegal. And so I, I've seen it happen all the time where they'll pull out gummy edibles that they made at home and they're like trying to give them to my staff. And I'm like, <laughs> intercepting. Yeah. I'm like, I'm the lame boss. Cause I'm like, you can't have those free edibles, you know, but, uh, yeah, we get, you give them samples. Yeah, so. we give them, they, yeah, they get free all the time, it. but we it's, it's one of those things 
things where it's like, I bet you those are great, mm-hmm. but I can't take them from you. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of like people, oh, do you hot box the break room? Are you all just mm-hmm. high all the time? And it's like, actually, like our job requires us to do it with so much cash, yeah. so much product, so much money, whether it's in a product or a cash form, like we actually can't be blazed, no. right? Like some of... Mm-hmm. Some people have got to be blazed to do their daily functions. <laughs> I get it, right? But like most of us can't, well, people will know when, when we're blazed, right? Everyone would know. Um, I can't so, do it before five. My uh, task driven mind shuts off, and then my, uh, yeah. My 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 creative brain. yeah stoner <laughs> your stoner mind. Brain. my high thoughts with Kev mind yeah your comes high on. thoughts with Kev yeah. I you know it's it's wild so the misconceptions that people have so it's you know how they buy cannabis they can buy them in larger doses on the med side on the rec side there's just but the the thing that's happening in the market now is the demand mm-hmm. is driving the recreational side right so yeah. you're seeing a lot of companies demand in quantity or different product types both. too because you were going to talk about that yeah I yeah, think. yeah so yeah. we can touch on the product yeah. types but it's the demand and quantity mm-hmm. and the demand and product types yeah. so uh growers and, and our processors really mm-hmm. anyone who's creating edibles or any of those other products outside of flour are realizing that like the demand is being driven towards rec so they're making and they get the prices are higher you know mm-hmm. they can charge us wholesale oh, yeah. more on the recreational side than the medical because medical mm-hmm. is a, me- a medicinal use right yeah. like you're not price gouging people who are patients yeah. who are using this for you know it's we're not the pharmaceutical industry yeah. we're trying not to i've be. seen you give like huge discounts to just allow a medical patient to literally get yeah. what they needed. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a big thing yeah. too, is we've got cancer patients who we have a cancer patient program and we do, there's RSO is something we'll touch on, but mm. a big product that cancer patients use. Um, and so it's, it's, I'm not here to make money off people that are using this medicinally, right? Like we're a business. We need a profit. We need mm. to like keep our Absolutely. doors open, pay our, pay our employees and, and do all the things that we need to do as a business to stay alive. Mm. But we're also not here to price gouge people. Yeah. So we we simply set our prices based on what we're being given on the wholesale side. Mm-hmm. You know how what much how much we're paying for. Something. And we're selective about it. It's not only about the best price, which I know it's not for, for a lot of people are yeah. like that. But well, ever ever since markets, they banned yeah. caregiver, you've seen mm-hmm. in there's no cap by the way on the number of dispensaries or grows or cultivators in the state of Michigan as a whole. Yeah. Cities can set That's, limits, which right? they usually do. Which, they, which yeah. some of them do, but there's so many cities in Michigan. Mm-hmm. You know, we're a pretty big state. Yeah. So it's one of those things where I'm realizing like the new num- like vendors after they banned caregiver all these caregivers are like i'm going to the license mm-hmm. market good for them you know but then the market has become extremely saturated it's mm-hmm. so saturated right now with vendors and growth like oh, yeah. i i call it the vendor train i get inundated with vendors mm-hmm. monday tuesdays and wednesdays at the shop you know just come in can you buy my product and listen all this product is awesome yeah it's and quality and i stuff. wish we could you like you could talk to every one of them because they're all Awesome people. I wish I, I could Amazon warehouse the shit yeah. out of everyone's week. Yeah. Like I wish I had a building big enough, a vault big enough. A like I, I just can't physically fit more product in my store mm. right now. And then you ask my staff, they're like, every time I come to work, you have a new product. I'm like, I just can't say no to people because their products are so cool. Yeah, yeah. You know? And so and they're cool people. Cause it's like you meet them and it's it's not even really about their product anymore. It's about like them and who they are and their vision and like what they're trying to do with cannabis. And it's it, like off the bat, you know, like, are they in this for the right or the wrong yeah. reason, right? Are they, dr- like, are they money-driven? Which, uh, everybody is a little yeah, money-driven, course, you know? But yeah. are they actually in this for, like, the benefit of the customer and the patient? Because cannabis is that. You know, don't, we can't, I will never say that cannabis's primary use is to benefit people. Yeah. Um, and so, it's wild, the products that are coming out to market. And, and people... Well, and you know what, though? Even even if it's not the primary use to benefit people, I will, I will say one thing. I, I was just going to say, I, I had this conversation real quick with somebody the other day, and, and we were talking about the recreational use. And, you know, life is freaking crazy. There's a bunch of crap going on everywhere. There's always something negative going on. A thousand things coming at you at once. Sometimes it's mentally healthy for you to oh, be able to just tune yeah. out and smoke a joint. Dude. That's that's the number one thing for me. I would work 24 hours a day and work myself to the bone if I didn't allow myself to smoke. So for me, that does help my my body oh, because it helps absolutely. my mind too. So yeah, it's it's one of those things yeah. that you realize the benefits across the board. Like like I said, I started out smoking weed because it was fun. Mm-hmm. I, it was a fully recreational thing when I was a teenager, and then I started like I was like I'm gonna take a tolerance break, <laughs> you know, and I took a tolerance break, and then I was like why am I so anxious all the time? Like what's going on? You know? And so I realized that there was like legitimate connections to cannabis helping me Mm -hmm. on like the medicinal side where I was like, my back hurts. I have sciatica pain, like smoke a joint gone, you know, Mm -hmm. put a topical on. Bye bye. Or I got my mind running like crazy. There's a billion things at once. Yeah. Yeah, Now you, you know, you're like, 
what cookie should I eat? Yeah. You know, like it's those Oreos. I yeah. snack, you know, like and or that's the one Oreo. You it's weirdo. not always great for everybody. Oreo Listen, snack. it was a seventy five milligram single mm-hmm. Oreo. I would. Yeah. Oh, oh, it was a medicated. It was Oreo. a medicated. Oh, Oreo. I thought you, you were talking. We're circling back. To well, that. No, I was still thinking because I still thought I was like. She's crazy. How do you eat a single no. Oreo oh, once no, no, you no. break I into like the a, bag? Like I eat like one ten sleeve of out of the four. Usually that would have been like a thousand if I would. You would yeah, eat ten of those. So never mind. I would have Scratch that. Probably, That's how you I'd don't ever smoke weed again. I would probably still be high from six years ago if I ate yeah. a thousand milligrams. That's one so, of those times you don't ever smoke again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's where, where you're like, I had the worst experience <laughs> in my life. I'm never gonna eat an mm-hmm. edible again. But you know that kind of leads us into like, what products are there? Mm-hmm. Like, how can I get high, right? Or how can I? medicinally like dose myself to yeah. like help with the things that I have. So it's wild. I'll just, you know, rattle them off. Right. So you've yeah. got, you've got edibles. These are things that you eat, you consume like orally, right. Mm-hmm. So uh, you ingest it orally. Um, mm-hmm. you've got gummies, you've got mm-hmm. chocolate bars, you've got chocolate sticks, which is like basically a chocolate lollipop. You've got actual lollipop. Pop rocks. Pop, pot rocks. Yeah. Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate, pot rocks, infused drinks, fruit punch, lemonades. Popsicles. Uh, yep. mm-hmm. Yeah, there's yeah, CBD, pops, CBD popsicles, yeah. not THC, I'm but sure. yeah. you're talking everything from tinctures, mm-hmm. which is just like an oil based, mm-hmm. like an oil in a dropper. Um, you, you've got like everything out there. You've got mm-hmm. gum. You get it's Ooh, wild. Rice crispy treats. Rice crispy treats, brownies, mm-hmm. cookies. I mean, like fudge. Everything. Like yeah. literally, you're infused dinners now too. People are doing. Dude, yeah. You can you can buy peanut butter. You can buy mm-hmm. honey that's infused, and you're like, oh, like. As if I couldn't get high, like I'm gonna put it in everything, you yeah. know. Like it's one of those things where I like, see it, I'm like, wow, I'm just gonna be blazed all day now. I'm mm-hmm. just like, I can put it in my coffee and like. Which is funny. Wait, you know, many states too. I still find this funny. Like states or even countries, they actually dictate down to some of that too. Like what you can actually have. Some of them are just what they oh, call laws and yeah, yeah, yeah. So, versus, so Florida, yeah. for example, is yeah. like. You know, there's certain states where it's like flour only yeah. or vape carts and flour only yeah. or edibles and vape carts only. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really wild, like what they're choosing to do. But Michigan, it's pretty freaking cool. Like yeah, We have like open. the full reign of like we have THC infused sugar packets. We have stevia that's infused. Like yes. stuff is getting wild. You made like, lift. You, you made a fruit punch I, off of a product. I one made time. a yeah. fruit punch for a holiday Christmas yeah. party for my staff. Yeah. yeah, that was infused with some yeah. fast acting THC powder. Mm-hmm. And then for a wedding, I just offsite Christmas party, of course, offsite. <laughs> of course, never on-site consumption of cannabis in my building. Um, but, you know, and then I, I, I made some infused cheesecake cups mm. for a wedding for a friend. Yeah. You know, it's all, you find me in the local newspaper, drug in the Those were fire, too. I still have one in my fridge, actually. As yeah, right <laughs> so now. it's it's one of those things where the market, yeah. it's become so diverse. So someone is like, I don't want to do that. Well, there's something for you. You know, mm. like, there is something for everybody. So, and then when you're talking about inhalation, so inhaling stuff, you're talking, uh, well, you know, a little crash course. Edibles, there are two kinds. You've got your fast acting and your regular, so I'm mm-hmm. not going to dive too deep into that. But obviously, one, it says it's fast acting, so it happens. It's, it hits little, it's fast acting. Mm-hmm. It happens a little bit faster. The on, So the onset time is shorter, and the duration of your high is shorter. Um, and then you're talking traditional edibles that need to be processed by your liver. Um, mm-hmm. Those have a longer onset time based on a million factors. What did you eat? What time? When did you take mm-hmm. it? How much did you take? Does your body process drugs fast or slow? Whatever it is, right? So by the time it makes its way to your liver and gets processed, now you're getting high. And so we're going to dive into this for a whole episode because oh, I episode. love edibles. So yes, you're so gonna much. Get some- so so, and then, then the you know, duration deeper. of your high is much longer. Mm-hmm. So that's why people, when they smoke weed, they're like, I'm high for a couple hours and they eat an edible. They're like, dude, I was baked for 12 <laughs> hours. And I'm like, I could have told you well, that. Well, nothing beats that first one though the too. first edible high the is first edible so high wild. is always like 12 hours i, I don't want to reference it again without telling it but that funny joke i'm going to tell you a story one yeah, time about me and my wife's first date it was first about 12 hours edible ever like outside of that oreo like whooped me mm-hmm. right so i still never had anyone that was like it was it, like, there was chocolate covered oreos and it's the same token it's just like there's this key lime chocolate bar right and i was like that sounds mm-hmm. awesome you yeah. know and the whole bar it was, it was before it was like, we call it, we call it the wild, wild west in the mm-hmm. industry where when a market is, it's legal. Mm-hmm. And so the medical market came legal, but there's still the laws and parameters are being figured out, yeah. right? So dosages mm-hmm. and all of that were being figured out. So there wasn't really as much dosing laws back then. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure this edible is a thousand milligrams. Okay. Oh. Like if I can remember the gold packaging with like a sticker printed off of like someone's computer, mm-hmm. so like a thousand milligrams, key lime chocolate bar. I was like, okay. So when you get a Hershey bar at the store, like you don't eat one freaking piece. Like, yeah. and no one does that. That's, that's a little crazy. So I went to a party like at MSU. Like one Oreo crazy. Yeah, like or one Oreo crazy. So I went to a party at MSU and visiting a friend, St. Patty's Day. Best holiday, like best holiday to have a party at MSU. Let me tell you, like green and yeah. white, like they're all, yeah. know all about the green. Oh and white. yeah. So 
went up there and I had this edible and I go, my friend's like, oh, what's that? I said, oh, it's an edible. I picked it up at the mm-hmm. dispensary, you know, I'm like, it's a thousand milligrams. So mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my God. And it, for some reason it didn't sound like a lot. They're like, oh, mm-hmm. that's nothing. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. It's nothing. Yeah. So, you know, I said, I'm going to eat half. Like, I'm just going to eat half, like half a chocolate bar doesn't seem insane to anybody. Yeah. Like, no, whatever. So just I ate half of half. it. And, and this was like before I had experience with them. So I didn't know. Famous like, hey, wait, last word. Famous last yeah, word. That was like, a perfect famous last yeah, word. Yeah, I didn't know that it took like there. 30 yeah. to 90 minutes yeah. to kick in. Right. So after like 10 or 15 minutes, I'm like, I'm not I yet. Yeah. So I'm going to smash the other Let half me of take this two more. chocolate bar. So I, I, ate the, I ate a whole chocolate bar. and That's the, the, that devil voice. <laughs> it was like, do it. And so the whole... The, the whole way I've ever heard people like strive is like, it's like a hitting a brick wall. Mm. Right. So like I, I was sitting on the couch and I just remember like immediately going to deep thought of like, who am I? Why am I in this universe? What like, is my purpose? What is my purpose? <laughs> right. So then I'm like, I look around and I, I feel like I genuinely don't recognize anyone mm-hmm. in the room. Right. And it's like, I'm surrounded by friends and I'm yeah. like, you're all aliens. Like this is wild. So I'm so high and, and you're sure this was THC, right? This was, I'm, I, just I'm almost positive. It was all THC, but you know, who knows back in the wild, wild west. So it was all THC. I, all I know is I sat down on mm-hmm. the couch for a party. It was, we start, you know, we start early. It was like mm-hmm. 8 a.m. Right. Yeah. It was St. Patrick's Day. Gotta get going early. So it's eight a.m. Eight a.m. I took a thousand milligram chocolate bar. Savage. Eight p.m. Yeah. I was in the same fucking spot on the couch. Ooh. Same spot. Like literally didn't yeah. move, and I, I slept for like twelve hours in an upright oh, sitting the position. The end when you the end. And I woke too, up yeah. to like it was like a you're on scene for like a mm-hmm. show, and I like woke up to a whole new cast, right? Mm-hmm. So I like woke up, and I'm like, who? Where are my friends? Yeah. And I'm like, who are you people? Yeah. And they were like. They're like, oh, you've been here all day. Like, you know, what's your name? I'm like, Victoria, like, where are my friends? And they're like, oh, like, this party's been going all day. Like, my friends are already, like, long gone. Yeah, Try to wake out. me up. I was, mm-hmm. like, I was in a different universe, I'm pretty sure, at the time. But those are the things that people don't realize with edibles. And so now the state's made it. Oh, controlled. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So controlled. And, mm-hmm. and, and it needs to be. Like, listen, I had a good time. Yeah. But, like, I was also, you know enjoyed the shit out of being high but not everyone does so i'm very lucky that i just slept or not everybody has i mean any sort of tolerance at all to everybody's like we said bodies are different which we'll talk about in an edibles specific episode yeah exactly so you got your edibles you can eat them in any way shape or form they're they're capped at 100 on the rec side 200 on the med side but you know the the standard dose so Mm -hmm. to to compare that a thousand is what i ate the standard dose we like to start people at would be a 10 milligram Mm -hmm. right so i like a hundred times like what I was like, I do yeah. math right I think that's what I ate a hundred times what I should have ate wait, I have to get family member permission for this one too ah whatever well so my mom tried an edible uh, when I gave it to her sorry <laughs> mom fine. I'm she, sure nobody you know cool. is gonna see it she's retired anyway so it's good <laughs> um but uh yeah I think I gave her like 10 milligrams and it was she it was she was like oh it was a little too much but honestly she got in her own head too so oh that's happens to you yeah. but you know it, there's just so many ways so you've got your edibles you're talking inhalation which is more immediate than an edible right whether your edible is fast acting or not so there's still some onset time mm-hmm. so you're talking oh i want to get high like right now because like we're in the society of everything right here right now like fast food fast this fast that so you want to get high right now it's smoking so yeah. you're smoking flour yeah. or you're smoking a pre-roll so it's mm-hmm. already rolled into a joint for or you or vaporization right combustion right? vaporization combustion? Yeah. yeah so you're smoking in there that's another thing we could dive into yeah. you can smoke your weed in a million ways now like mm-hmm. it's not just like putting it in your bowl or your bong and lighting it up like there's dry herb vaporizers mm-hmm. there's just so many ways that you can like light your weed now what um, do i know something cool about that ohio i just found this out actually yesterday in Ohio, uh, th- this is going to change. Obviously, it's it's coming, but I, I would have to imagine I'm not a regulator in Ohio. But uh, it's interesting uh, combustion, right? So lighting it with a lighter, um, not legal. It's actually uh, even on the medical side, you're supposed to vaporize it. Oh. So if you notice, and I actually googled this on the way here because I'm like, oh, I don't want to sound stupid if this is wrong. And I tested two, and I was right. Um, I looked, I two looked sources. for pre rolls. <laughs> No, no pre-rolls, but no, because I asked a a guy that was in the industry in Ohio and he's like, yeah, we can't do, I said, you do pre-rolls and he's like, no, we can't do combustion. It's vaporization only, right? Uh, Go to the gas station, get your papers rolled. But I I looked at a few dispensaries, you can't find pre-rolls. So that's just another crazy example how like everything is different in these products. So different from state to state. And why Michigan's so cool Cool. because we do have Yeah, the testing requirements is what people don't realize. Mm -hmm. So there's like testing requirements from the medical side to the recreational side. And you're talking on the medical side, a... This might go over some people's head. They don't mm-hmm. really understand it, but there's 10,000 parts per million yeah. that's allowed mm-hmm. per product on the med side. So people are like, parts per million of what? Like, yeah. you know, of what? And I'm, and this is going to sound a little scary, I guess, but it's metals and mm-hmm. yeast and mold, like a- any of those things. That a sounds- lot of, a lot of these things we talk about too, right? 
a bajillion different processes and products that you right. pass by in your house. Yeah, have yes. worse than this. Yeah, like if worse. we say that, like worse things. And so mm-hmm. it sounds scary, right? Because if your, uh, you know, taco box at the store was like your taco shell said like contains like ten thousand parts per million of like metal, you're like, oh, yeah. fucking even that, yeah. right? But it, it's just kind of the way that it goes. So if it passes testing, like. Feel good to consume it's it. safe. Like it's yeah. safe, right? So mm-hmm. the state's like, we know this is like not harmful to your body. And they look for all that. What? Heavy metals, microbials, uh, yeast, blah, 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 mold, yeast, molds. All of it. So uh, they, they look at Virus, yeah, dip, d- tons of different stuff, which we're learning more about. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the testing just keeps getting like a little bit stricter and stricter mm-hmm. too, which is kind of cool. But on the recreational side, you're looking at 100,000 parts per million. So 10 times what's allowed on the med side. So that's just saying like even 100,000 is like safe to consume yeah. while the med side is like, really a fine tooth comb because uh, you know it is just kind of the way that it works so mm-hmm. there was also up for a long time we weren't even able to like transfer products so mm-hmm. like take a med product and, and sell it on the rec side but you know now we can with certain parameters there's like a 30-day rule and there's a lot of stuff that makes it really hard to do so might as well just buy the product and the license yeah. that you want it but as a dispensary you can actually take like medical products because mm-hmm. the testing is so much stricter that it would 100 percent if it passed for med it's going to pass for uh, rec, yeah. right so you could transfer, transfer that after a 30-day yeah. period and all that kind of stuff but again headache so we, we just mm-hmm. don't we choose not to do that unless it's a product that's just not moving over there um but then there's a parameter is it a 200 milligram edible yep well it can't be moved mm-hmm. so things like that that's it's kind of wild but Going back to like the the ingestion methods that you have and the things that you can buy in Michigan, it's 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 all available. There's a ton of stuff. So you have pre rolls, which is all a weed already packed in a joint for you. A lot of the growers are coming out now and doing all flower pre rolls. Mm-hmm. So back in the day, what it would be is they'd grow their weed, they take their best weed, all their nugs, and they'd sell it as weed. And then they take their trim and their shake. So like the the sugar leaves that we call them sugar leaves, but leaves that fall off the, the plant. That are the, yeah, the extras that like don't make it look nearly as pretty. You know, would be rolled into a joint. And so harsher, um, usually a harsher hit, but a little again, bit less potent, a little less potent, but yeah, still not as flavorful. High. Still gets you high, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. not nearly so. It's not the best part of the yeah. weed. Right? And sometimes it's just it's a good cost too. So if it's still good you high some people don't need that high tolerance they rather buy the economical yeah. pre-rolls and, and it makes it a little bit cheaper yeah, yeah so a pre a gram of a pre-roll back then would have been way cheaper than a gram of weed you know mm-hmm. because it's it's not nearly as quality of stuff that's in it but again like you said it's it's for the consumer it's the convenience factor mm-hmm. of being able to smoke like right here right now um so i love that i love that about pre-rolls that there's that easy like in and out factor it's probably one of the top selling categories mm-hmm. in the state of michigan it's like edibles flour and yeah. noodles you know yeah. they're kind of the top categories vape cards yeah. too yeah flour flour is still king yeah. overall oh, but it is. as yeah. the can I, I was just saying this the other day with somebody too you know the biggest thing with some of these other product types we're talking about too like when it comes to concentrates you know it, it uh the lingo in the industry and the words that we use and the words we communicate and understand in this space like matter to mass adoption so i always think of like you know i, I like to call concentrates concentrates why i don't want to call them dabs right well because like yeah that's what everybody knows the dab but like that's, the you, pro- that's like the verb exactly like you start to think about that and like people just think this dab this complicated glass rig with a freaking torch and all this craziness yeah, it looks like a crack pipe one yeah they have yeah. pens now that you can just put the extract in and smoke so i think as some of these device manufacturers to start to you know come out with new consumption well, methods and make and it they're comfortable they're not even allowed yeah. to really market their product at cannabis yeah. right so they're like put your lilac in here and burn yeah. it and you're like okay you know smoke like, your you natural smoke lavender your natural essential oils in this pen and it's like uh, yeah let me just inhale like lavender oil yeah. all day but probably would be great but it's one of those things where so you're talking immediate inhalation so you're talking flour put it in your bong your bowl whatever you'd like Mm -hmm. you're talking put it in a pre-roll you can actually buy papers you can buy cones you just have to like stuff your ground you you can buy hemp made of hemp wrap and all these fancy different flavors so in a dispensary you will not find any tobacco products we are not licensed or allowed to sell Mm -hmm. tobacco products not even swishers not wraps Mm -hmm. nothing like the wraps that we carry are hemp they have mm-hmm. no tobacco, never once a trace of tobacco. It's just the way it is. And I'm, you know, I'm cool with it. It is what it is. Um, but you're talking, and then this kind of leads into concentrates, but vaporizing is also an inhalation mm-hmm. method. So it's Which a, a lot of the medical patients like too, yeah, because yeah. it's not the traditional combustion method. Well, it's not the traditional yeah. combustion method, but I think it's a, it's a huge market specifically mm-hmm. because it's discreet. There's mm-hmm. still a stigma yes. around cannabis. We don't want everyone to smell our weed. We live at home with our parents and we can't let them know we're like smoking weed upstairs mm-hmm. or in the basement, yeah. you know? So it's like, this is how I can hide my yeah. weed. Oh, they smell less. They smell a lot less. Flour. And there's, and there's mm-hmm. different variations. So you've mm-hmm. got, you know, 
vape carts that are made with cannabis derived terpenes. And we'll touch mm-hmm. on all this might sound like alien talk, but yeah. uh, we'll touch on terpenes and like what that is. But there's cannabis derived terpenes, which will make the cart smell more like weed and it'll hit more like weed in the sense that the high you get is more like smoking flour. And then you're talking botanically derived terpenes, which is terpenes are the, the flavor gives the flavor, the effect that's what you're getting out of mm-hmm. terpenes, right? So you're talking botanical. So from fruit or from flowers. Um, so those, that high will be a little bit different than smoking weed. And it also smells know something really a lot cool? less. You want to know something cool really quick, Always. actually, to interject yeah. with that? Um, and I could go much deeper into this, but like there's flavonoids in the plant too. This is what I, oh, one yeah. thing I want to talk about. It's kind of interesting with the terpenes too. You know, terpenes, the biggest effect is, is actually... Uh, through the smell, the smell of oh, the terpenes, your which in, yeah, that's, yeah. that's literally what terpenes are. So, you know, a lot of people, they talk about like, Oh, these are lemony flavor terpenes. And so it's really like how it reacts with your, yeah, your whole neurological the medical system. term for that. I can't think your of it. Your olfactory system. I don't know. Your smell system. That thing. I, yeah. I think I said it. <laughs> nose <laughs> factory. Nose factory. Me. No, it knows the nose factory. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you've got all these methods to inhale. So there's something for everybody. You got your vape cards, which is, is huge because it's discreet. It's it, unfortunate people do network, even if it's round upon, not with me, but like at other mm-hmm. jobs and places I yeah. see people be like, well, this is how I smoke. I'm a construction worker and this yeah. is how I get my, you know, my mm-hmm. smoke, my weed, or this is what I smell. I smoke cause I live with my dad and he hates to smell weed. Yeah. And so things like that. So it's, it's discreet, especially when, you know, uh, all these like tobacco carts started coming out or like these vapes, tobacco vapes. Mm-hmm. It's like hard to know, like, is that a, tobacco vape or is yeah. that a weed vape you know yeah. unless the weed is it's just blown right in your face yeah, so exactly you're talking like that and then you're also talking transdermally right mm-hmm. so there's a kind of three ingestion methods there's like an oral ingestion method there's like which is also inhalation but mm-hmm. then there's like a transdermal mm-hmm. so there's patches that don't give you any psychoactive effects mm-hmm. but they give you the medicinal effects of the plant which is super cool it's kind of oh, like yeah. you know, people like nicotine patch when they think like patch, thca right? too which we'll talk yeah, a ton yeah. about so too you're yeah. talking and they also have uh and in tablets. So THC mm-hmm. can come in tablets, like pills. Like if mm-hmm. that's like your thing and you want to throw it in with your vitamins every day, like yeah. instead of eating a gummy because it's too high sugar, that's yeah. a lot of the reason people don't eat them, yeah. take a tablet but or a tincture. Mm-hmm. But we're talking transdermally, lotions, balms, topicals, patches, like all these things contain THC mm-hmm. and you know, go through your skin cells. And if you, if you have a drug test, you'll drop dirty on your drug test. If, if you use transderm or, uh, yeah, transdermals that have THC, however, there's no psychoactivity to it. So yeah. it's for the person who's like, I'm not worried about being drug tested. I have knee pain, but I don't want to feel high. When you say psychoactivity, I don't, I think we covered it, but basically psycho, when we say, is it psychoactive? Does it get you high? So when we talk about CBD a little bit later, another episode, whatever, it's non psychoactive in some cases, but that's what we mean when we say psychoactive. Does it get you high or not? Yeah, exactly. So, so it's one of that's and that's a big point for people because there's people that they're not like anti cannabis, but they're trying to function. Like, mm-hmm. hey, I can be high, but I can't be high in work. Like, I can't be high and take care of my kids. I can't be high and do the duties I need to do on a day to day basis. But I still have knee pain, yeah. right? So I can't smoke a joint in the middle of the day when my knee hurts, but mm-hmm. I need something. So yeah. my and it's like a people don't believe it right until they try it they try topicals because sometimes they can be pricey but they're freaking worth it right i use a topical every night on my back and it's like i don't care i am glad i don't get high from it i I enjoy the fact that my back pain just goes away so it's it's really cool to be able to like show people these items those other uses yeah and they're like what that's a whole episode in itself that's a whole episode of itself like uses yeah Yeah. like uses of cannabis like what Mm -hmm. it can be used for how can we like pair products to give you like inside and outside benefits of cannabis, like from the inside of your body to the outside of your body, you're trying, you have an ailment. Like let's like, I'm not a doctor, right? Everything Mm -hmm. is, you listen to your doctor first, no matter what, but I've got ideas and I've got, Mm -hmm. I've seen it firsthand of myself or personal experiences with other people. So it's one of those things that's so fun because cannabis is such a personal experience. It's a personal adventure. It's tailored to each person individually. Like how you choose to use cannabis will vary depending mm-hmm. on your personal situation and like what works for someone. And it, it also sucks being a personal journey because it, I tell people, I'm like, it's trial and error mm-hmm. and you have to be patient. Find how you like you to have consume to be patient with is. until yep. you find your exact way to do things. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you tried edibles. I eat, I've had people go, I eat a thousand milligrams of edible. It doesn't do anything to me. And it's a truth. It's mm-hmm. not yeah. fake. And you think people are lying or they're trying to be cool to their friends. Like, Oh, you can eat a thousand. It's nothing like, no, that's actually a thing. Yeah, you know, biologically, it it's yeah. the way your the enzymes in your body work out. So getting more into that like medical stuff that we'll get into like in other episodes, but it's kind of wild that, you know, and some people at first are like, Oh, that person's just lying. I'm like, no, like there are people that can mm-hmm. eat a thousand milligrams and feel nothing. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm not one of those yeah. people, but like that there are people that are like that or there's people, you know, and 
you build a tolerance to cannabis, yeah. right? So that's a little bit of a downside, but you build tolerance to melatonin. Anything, you build tolerance yeah. to all drugs. Medication, that you alcohol, have to build, yeah. You have to increase. Yeah, like I could drink one glass of wine, I could have seven, you know, like whatever, mm. whatever it is. So it's kind of cool to be able to sit down and speak with a customer mm. and and find this ultimate like plan for them. Like what, yeah. are, what are we going to do to like help benefit you? And then I love also the customers that come in and they're like, I'm just trying to get so freaking ripped. Yeah. I don't even care what it does for me. It's like, hard. Yeah, like just let me, I want to sit yeah. on my couch and eat everything in sight and be mm. so baked that I like, yeah. you know, I sit and watch like Nat Geo Wild when I'm super, super high yeah. and it is, if you've never done that, do it. It's like the most oh, yeah. wild experience I've ever seen. Like, mm -hmm elks like bashing their heads into each other become tenfold more interesting yeah. than like it before you know I, I, it's it's wild it, like how it can enhance these things it's like oh, some yeah. people are drinking you it, know? sometimes it just makes things fun you know you mentioned these two different like wild groups of people just there that is why we say it's more than just thc right like thc is you know it's well it's primary use right now in the market is to get you high it actually has a lot of medicinal benefits as a booster to other cannabinoids that we'll talk about but yeah it's more than just thc right so we get caught up talking about thc cbd uh the ones that traditionally people know but there, there's so many other uh we call them minor Major. cannabinoids majors and minors right um so again another thing we'll go and do later but majors and minors there's a lot of um minor well uh, uh, certain major cannabinoids that are still coming to light a little bit more and a lot of minor cannabinoids that are coming out of nowhere uh for various different ailments you mentioned it earlier you said the industry doesn't have enough like uh, uh testing uh research right we have testing to make sure the product's safe but we, we don't have research yeah. as much yet as like honestly i, I believe israel is one of the, well, they were, or I don't know if they still are one of the leading industry um, in, in research, but we don't have enough of that. So as we're getting more of that, and uh, you know, I won't mention any specifics, but like, you know, I've talked to several universities that are putting cannabis program pro programs into place. So you know, for anybody out there that's interested in learning a ton more about this, a lot of your local universities are putting this together. Uh, they're not necessarily like promoting it like crazy right now, or the program's new, but they are there. So go reach out, try to find those people. Uh, there's there's in institutions that are helping you so you don't just have to google it anymore so yeah it's it's pretty wild too so when, when we say major and minor cannabinoids it's it's thc is a cannabinoid to just plainly so you can understand that and then in cbd is a cannabinoid found in cannabis major cannabinoids are the cannabinoids that are found most prevalent most present in in larger quantities in the plant and then you're talking minor cannabinoids it's it's cannabinoids that are found in smaller quantities in the plant. THCO, THCV. THC, yeah, tons of stuff that, that like maybe you've heard about, mm. maybe you don't know about. But um, again, research is the ultimate barrier for us to be able to bring products to the market that have more diversity. So like different cannabinoids and the one, they're, what they can help you with. So, you know, we might not have actually like formally touched on it. So I'll touch on it a little bit, but CBD versus THC. All right. So these, we'll start there. Those are the two cannabinoids everyone's pretty familiar with, mm -hmm. you know, they know about. And there's a lot of states that actually the way CBD has to be sold from a licensed facility. It's kind of wild. I, I have the magazines. I follow out of the cannabis space and uh, CBD. Actually, sometimes you have to have like a card prescribed to you by your doctor to purchase CBD in a lot of states. So it's kind of wild, even though it's not. It's, so CBD in its own is non-psychoactive. Again, doesn't get you high. You don't feel high. None of that. There's kind of three variations of how you can find CBD. You've got your full spectrum CBD, which is, you know, contains CBD, but it also contains all of can the cannabinoids in the plant. So that means THC too, to a 0.3%, mm -hmm. you know, constant, like concentration. Yeah. And then you're talking uh, broad spectrum CBD. So when you are talking broad spectrum CBD, you're, you're talking all of the cannabinoids in the plant, except THC. So anything in the like CBN, CBD, CBDA, CBG. Hardest process to make, by the way, the, yeah, broad, spectrum, the broad spectrum, just pull the THC out and leave everything else. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's pretty hard. It's pretty wild. So when we talk more about extraction, like it, it blows your mind what they do in these labs mm -hmm. to get these products for us. It's, it's pretty freaking cool. Um, and then you're talking an isolate form of a cannabinoid. So there's THC isolate as well. You can find that in like a concentrated form that you can dab. Um, but you've got CBD isolate, which is they're going into the plant and they're just extracting mm -hmm. that cannabinoid. Like they're yeah. not looking for anything else mm -hmm. but that, which means. Or actually to yeah, extracting everything and then kind of rearranging and just pulling out that CBD yeah. isolate. Yeah, exactly. So, it, and this is important for a lot of reasons. I understand, and I've said this probably 10 times in this podcast already, but THC and getting high isn't for everybody. Mm -hmm. So when I go, okay, well I'll pivot. You don't want to get high, but you want some relief for your pain. Have you ever tried CBD? Mm -hmm. And people are like, 
Or, yeah, I bought something at the gas station years ago and it didn't do anything for me. I'm like, okay, listen, mm. can't buy like... My neighbor made buy, the best CBD in their kitchen sink. Yeah, <laughs> would you buy like your prescription medication yeah. from the gas station? Probably not. Yeah. So I'm like, listen, you got you to gotta think about it a little bit more about where these products are coming from and where they're putting them. So, um, you know, there's there's companies on for CBD on a national scale and there's companies that are like based out of Michigan for mm. CBD. And those are the ones I hold close to my heart. Oh, you know, yeah. I, I actually know the owners and it's mm. really cool to like... You've been in the plant, you've seen them process the it. Yeah, yeah, you feel comfortable selling it. So if you're someone who wants relief from an ailment that's, but without getting that psychoactive high, you're looking at CBD. So if you're also someone who then works for the state or the government or an, uh, you are a contractor and you get drug tested or workers workman's comp, like whatever yeah. it is, right? You want to stay in that broad spectrum to isolate form of CBD, okay? It has no trace of THC. Because like I said, even with transdermal like products, you can get that 0.3% THC that it can drop in a drug test because mm-hmm. drug tests oh, yeah. are capable of picking up even yep. the smallest amount of THC. It depends so, on the drug test too, yeah. Exactly, a five panel, a four panel, like whatever they're drug testing you on. But it, it also means, so there's relief for you without the risk of losing your job or, or whatever else, you know, or you're just someone who's like, I just don't want any yeah. THC in my body. I get that. Um, but the full, if I can be completely honest, you probably get the most medicinal benefits from a full spectrum CBD. Yes. So yeah. if you can you know, do it and you don't have any risks of drug tests or anything like that, I will never tell someone to risk their job Mm -hmm. for it. Right. But you can go to that full spectrum because when CBD and THC and all these other major and minor cannabinoids play together, you get the most enhanced medicinal effects from the these entourage products. Effect. The entourage mm-hmm. effect, which we'll go Buzzword into Buzzword well. of the last year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you'll find you'll find increased benefits from mm-hmm. both. Um, it's not that like standalone CBD yeah. and THC don't provide you any medicinal benefits, yeah. but it's like think about Autobots. You know, like mm-hmm. all the Autobots like form one massive Autobot. Mm-hmm. That's like when you put all the cannabinoids I together. That. That's I like, was like, like Autobots. I was thinking of like these little. Yeah, no, no, no. So that's what I think of. Yeah. It's like the metaphor I use with my, my patients, my customers. Yeah. Is I'm like, okay, so like Bumblebee is THC mm-hmm. and like Optimus Prime is mm-hmm. CBD. And then they'll like come together and make this like <laughs> massive robot, you mm-hmm. know, and it's like, that's cooler yeah. than the two alone. But yeah. it's, but them two alone are still pretty powerful. So, you know, you know the way I, you know, the way I tell people about that, actually, I, I, I thought I had a good one with that. Um, when it comes to like CBD specifically, I think a big issue in the industry was people last or about two years ago, whatever last year, even up to last year, as they said, uh, it was so cool at the time, CBD, right? And there was an article and every time something happened, they're like, oh my gosh, this person cured the craziest disease on the CBD, right? And it just got blown out of proportion. It went, it was like, oh, take CBD and you're going to cure everything. And I I literally joke, I think one time I, I, they actually had made CBD toilet paper and I'm like, oh my gosh, why would they make CBD toilet paper, yeah, right? It screwed the, it, it kind of screwed the industry. So the way I, the way I was going to say is it's like, you can consider like some of these like more formulated products, like they have that medicinal benefit, but that doesn't mean like, like an individual molecule like CBD isn't, doesn't do anything, but consider it a multivitamin, right? You have Advil. Oh, I have a headache. I'm going to take Advil to cure this. But when you take uh, vitamin C, for example, um, you're not going to take a vitamin C pill. Take one and be like, oh my gosh, I feel this vitamin C raging through my body. No, you're, you're going to take vitamin C over time. And vitamin C may help keep you in balance and it may help with other things. That's, in my opinion, what a lot of the research with CBD is. It's helping keeping you in homeostasis, keeping you yep. in balance, and just assisting other parts of your body, right? Making that an efficient freeway for everything to move yep. around. So. And- you saying that it leads into like, you know, we could, we could go down the rabbit hole, like mm-hmm. I said, with cannabis, yeah, but yeah, we could. you, you're talking, well, we'll talk, this is probably a big one that I would like to hit on mm-hmm. another podcast is the endocannabinoid system. The whole reason cannabis works with us and does what mm-hmm. it does for us. Right. So that whole, the whole, that system in your body, it's only job is to maintain homeostasis. So maintaining homeostasis is like an equilibrium in yeah. your body, whether it's your, your temperature, your immune system, mm-hmm. your, your, are you hungry? Are you not hungry? Your, your, your feelings, everything is tied to this, uh, you know, endocannabinoid system. So we'll, we'll definitely touch base on that moving forward, but it's why it's C- CBD is exactly like what he said. It's a vitamin. Okay. Mm. So you take it, you're not going to take CBD, wake up the next morning and be like, I'm joint pain free. Like oh. I'm Superman. But like you will after I tell people, the more you, the more you build it in your system, the better medicinal effects that you receive from CBD, non psychoactive again, mm. but you keep taking this like a vitamin and it's one day you realize like, I'm not nearly as groggy or I'm not nearly as inflamed or I'm not nearly as much in pain. But for some people, they take it for two months and they go, oh, I didn't feel anything. So mm. they stop taking it. Then you wake up next day, the day after that. And they're like, 
oh, why does my back hurt? What, yeah. And it's like, because they didn't realize it was working in the background. What happens when you stop? I said that. Yeah. I, uh, what yep. happens when you stop? And, yeah. and so for some people too, like it's how your body takes it. So CBD mm. might really not do a whole lot yeah. for you. It might do, it might, you might take it the next day and be like, I feel working Maybe great. you need that THC. Maybe you're one of those people that need that yeah. THC. That's, you know what? And I'll say, I don't care what anybody says. We don't know the answer to that yet. There's not enough research out there. We're going to find it. We got people out there doing it. Honestly, even down to the equipment, like when you start to think about it, our equipment is getting better. I could go into a rabbit hole about testing earlier uh, when she was mentioning it. They keep databases, these organizations, right? And as they find new molecules, new things, they keep these in a database and they're called standards. Manufacturers buy those standards and then basically work to those standards. So, yeah, exactly. um, and you know what, with, with, that, with that said too, um, you know, I think I don't want to steal some of these other great topics that we're going to probably yeah. have coming. Oh, so we're going to have so much yeah. to talk about for, yeah. for so many podcasts. So we, really we were worried about making this 30 minutes. I, know. I was looking, <laughs> I'm like, Oh man, we know what's up. We just, yeah. We just so, it. you know, I, I really hope it was our that first one. We were a little nervous. Sorry. <laughs> we, are, we are a little nervous. Yeah. Oops. I mean, we've been doing it for years. Uh, but it's, yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah. So it's one of those things where we hope you at least took some snippets of information from today to, to get a basis of who we are, what cannabis means to us, where, where we're going to take this podcast. Like, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to do moving forward? There's so mm-hmm. many topics that like just this podcast in itself has unearthed so many things that I would mm-hmm. love to be able to speak with you guys about. And where can they to, check like, us educate. out? Tell them where they can come check it out and meet the staff. You've been talking about two, two locations. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just do a little bit of shout a out here. Mini Plan- plug. Planet is, is my baby. Um, mm-hmm. Whitmore Lake, Michigan sandwiched in between Brighton and Ann Arbor. You can find us there. Um, you can also find us. We just opened our second location whoop, whoop, mm-hmm. in Flint. Um, so we're right off 23 actually. So we're right across from the GM plant. We do some, so UAW worker discounts and across a smoke shop too hey, yeah you can get your a, accessories a really yeah. good smoke shop across the yeah. street actually so you can like pop in buy your weed and then go buy like a grinder roll <laughs> everything you need to be set up but um awesome staff in both places so mm. that my heart lives in those stores um everything that we are is what planet is you know mm-hmm. so we we work hard to to make cannabis more than just just cannabis right so it's yeah. just what, just what about the by. email too we just started so we got this is embarrassing. I think I helped set it up. Cannabis yeah, coach cannabis at planet. Okay, there at planet yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you have questions about cannabis. You're not sure. Mm-hmm. Like we've got people on staff that are so freaking educated and are just so eager to help people. Mm-hmm. Like it is, it, it is the thing that melts my heart. Yeah. In my store, right. My staff are just like so excited to help mm-hmm. people with cannabis and not just get them high. Right. No. Like they're not just like this. They can tell you how to get ripped and they can tell you how to just ease like, your back pain. Ease your back pain yeah. or so it's, it's, whatever you have. It's pretty yeah. cool. It's a cool experience. And, and Hey, if we're not near you in either of those locations, you know, find a, find a reputable dispensary yeah. near you and, and check it out. Like it's so cool. If you've never been to one, it's not scary. Mm-hmm. There's someone that's going to guide you. It's safe. It's a safe place to buy cannabis, you know, do some research, figure out what's what brands fit you and, and, and work for you and stuff. But you know, yeah. if you're near a planted, I'm not going to tell you not to go come see yeah. us. It's just, you go to the same gas station every day. Yeah. Maybe not. You go to, tri- well, we do have a great store, so come to us as much as possible. But, but yeah, you know, no, that's a little yeah, plug, but yeah. at the end of the day, like I know that cannabis can help people. So like mm-hmm. find it in your easy accessible area, wherever you can. Um, don't let it scare you. There's, mm-hmm. there's someone in there that's gonna, you know, and Hey, if you go into a dispensary and you have a bad experience, like don't chalk that up to all that dispensaries yeah. are or cannabis is like, it's, it's not. So, mm-hmm. um, we really appreciate you taking the time to listen to us and, and deal with us on our first podcast. But, uh, if you look forward to the next few episodes, we'll have some, well, some fun stuff. We're going to a little bit more about our story, a little mm-hmm. bit more about maybe we'll go dive into edibles. We'll dive yeah. into the kind of, well, whatever they want too. I mean, look, so, so here's, stuff. here's the thing. Let us know what you guys want. Comment, send us an email, call our store, tell us you want to learn about a topic. We'll cover it. Yeah, um, yeah I think she said, yeah, we're going to do a little bit about our story. We're probably going to have some new guests next uh, next episode. Uh, and I think another one we wanted to do was, oops, messing with my cord here, uh, talk a little bit about a couple current events as well as uh, some big changes that we think are coming in, yeah. um, not only how they affect us as a business in a positive way in a lot of cases, but how they, again, in a positive way affect the consumer too. So um, yeah, check us back for next episode. And I would probably say like episode three and beyond, uh, we're going to really start diving yeah, into some yeah. topics, having vendors, people that have done this their whole life, cultivators, talking to you about how that seed becomes a wonderful plant that it yeah. is. We'll cover some topics that'll blow your minds. We're, so. we're super excited. So let us know mm-hmm. what, what you like what you didn't like, what you want to hear, what you what you don't want to hear. If you think I talk too much, you think Kevin talks too much, just let us know. Like, we're open to feedback. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on our next podcast yeah. or hearing. Cheers, guys. Bye.